It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. When Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, he said, he's going to move on the inside of you, and I have seen his work. Come on, when the angel told Mary, Mary said, how shall this be? <laughs> you have a baby coming to be a Mary. How's it going to happen? And the angel said, uh, I can't explain it to you. The Holy Ghost will come on you. He'll take care of it for you. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to move in you. And three major characteristics. Number one, exceptional knowledge. Exceptional knowledge. Come on. Exceptional knowledge. Come on, I saw the little poster with John Wayne's picture on it. It said, life is tough, and it's even tougher if you're stupid. So. <laughs> I like that. I don't know why. I'm just from Texas, so y'all pray for me. Now, so life can be tough, and it's even tougher if you're stupid. Actually, Dad Hagen said, you will be crippled in life and a victim of scheming people if you are not led by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has exceptional knowledge. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. He's a genius, but he's also a gentleman. As a gentleman, he's not going to interrupt you without your permission. But when you get tired of your results, you'll stop and say, oh, Holy Spirit, obviously I need some help here. So everybody say exceptional knowledge. That's number one. Number two is the Holy Spirit as an advocate. He has expertise in protocol and procedure. In other words, even though you may be able to win the case, unless when you go to the court, you're going to have to follow protocol and procedure. So the Holy Spirit has never lost a case if he can get his client to listen to him. In protocol and procedure. He will tell you certain protocol and procedure. In other words, he'll tell you how to act if you want to win that case. He'll tell you what to say and what not to say if you want to win that case. He knows protocol and procedure, and sometimes he'll tell you to rejoice. Sometimes he'll tell you to lift your voice. Sometimes he'll tell you to get down and humble yourself on your knees, and sometimes he'll tell you to dance and shout. In other words, he's going to help you win that case. Amen. He knows protocol and procedure. Amen. And your, your action is a demonstration in the seen and the unseen. Amen. Protocol and procedure. Number three. Number three. So this comes from P.C. Nelson. P.C. Nelson said this. He said the, the last one, number three, is he has persuasive speaking ability. Persuasive speaking ability. In other words, there's something about the Holy Spirit and there's something about the importance of speech and speaking that the Holy Spirit will prompt you to say something. Amen. Ah, I said the, there's something about, in this world, everything happens by speaking. That's why when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, I call that God's head bypass operation. Why would God want to bypass your head? You know the answer to that. You got blockages in there. So what God do? He'll just bypass your head from your spirit and speak right out of your mouth divine secrets and mysteries, and those things will come to pass, and your head will be going, what was you saying? I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I said. But you were speaking in a supernatural language that you never learned, and your intellect or your mind is laying there unfruitful, but your spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit. And while you're praying in other tongues, come on now, the devil can't stand it when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. I just heard James Robinson on uh, TBN not too long ago, and, and they were actually showing a program from back in the 80s when he was traveling as an evangelist, and he would do like a citywide meeting back in the 80s, powerful evangelist, fire evangelist. And so he said this, and he was preaching back in the 80s, a citywide meeting that had, you know, charismatics, Pentecostals, Baptist, Methodists, all kinds of people there, and James Robinson was preaching. And so to try to keep, you know, unity from those that speak in tongues and those, those that don't. So he mentioned that Billy Graham was speaking at Evangel Bible College, which is Assemblies of God 
Drive Bible College in Springfield, Missouri. So Billy Graham was speaking there, and he had a certain time allotted to him. And so while he was teaching or preaching, when he came to the end, his time allotted, then he stopped. Well, when he stopped this Assembly of God Bible College, this was many years ago, he said that um, uh, a gentleman in the crowd stood up and gave a message in other tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, started speaking in other tongues. Well, everybody's a little bit nervous, like, because this is supposed to be, you know, uh, just a, a group, you know, that's not really a Pentecostal emphasis. So this guy stood up and started speaking in other tongues and then interpreted the message in other tongues. So everybody's a little bit nervous. So they got back in the back room. So James Robinson said, someone asked her, Billy Graham said, Dr. Graham, uh, what did you think about that? <laughs> Speaking in tongues and interpretation. He said, well, I don't really know a lot about it. He said, but the funny thing is that when I finished my message, I finished at the time they gave me. He said, but I still had three more points to my message. He said, in that tongues interpretation, that gave the last three points to my message that I was not able to get. <laughs> Are y'all still here? In other words, the utterance gifts of the Holy Spirit, come on, are important, in other words, of speaking, are prophesying, are inspired utterance, are speaking the Word of God. So the Holy Spirit gives you what? Persuasive speaking ability. And that, those words actually will activate angels. Come on. Come on, in heaven's assignment, while you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And the Apostle Paul said, I thank my God, I speak with tongue more than you all. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now, in the work of the Holy Spirit, here's what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, the Holy Spirit, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, here's what he will do. I love the way he said this. He said, he has power over your intellect. <laughs> or, as others have said, the Holy Spirit will think through your mind. Now, if you've got a genius thinking through your mind, you know there's somebody else thinking through your mind. Because you know you never thought of that. Come on, and the Holy Spirit, come on, as a gentleman, come on, he'll constantly prompt you, come on, and he wants to think through your mind, right? Amen. Take the word, and the Holy Spirit began to think through your mind. In other words, your fill, your spirit, soul, and body yielded to him. So the Holy Spirit will do what? He'll think through your mind. He'll speak through your lips. Amen. Or, as Wigglesworth said, he has power over your voice. Ah, he has power over your voice. I thought, that's amazing because the Holy Spirit will take the victim out of your voice. Amen. You know what victim means? If you knew what I've been going through, you'd know why I'm looking like this right now. But let me just tell you something, Camel Breath. Come on. I didn't say bozo. No threat environment. Listen. You say victim out of your voice, or the complaint, or the whine out of your voice. Come on. In other words, if you knew what happened to Jesus, because whatever happened to Jesus is greater than anything that's ever happened to you. In other words, Wigglesworth said, there's not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. That means the devil can't reach it and stain it and damage it, but the blood can reach further still and remove the stain and the guilt, the shame, and put you a clean heart and God's love nature on the inside of you. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, there'll be no more victim in your voice. There'll be no more whining in your voice. There'll be no more complaining in your voice, but there'll be faith in your voice. There'll be victory in your voice. There'll be boldness in your voice. There'll be confidence in your voice. Ha, ha, ha. Just practice laughing just for a minute. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, you're the body of Christ. You're the triumphant church. In other words, that victory gets in your voice by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But here's the way he said it. He said, the Holy Spirit will think through your mind, speak through your lips. Listen to this. And he will magnify Jesus in a way that you never could without his help. Amen. Let's try that again. The Holy Spirit will magnify Jesus. That Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So Wigglesworth said it this way, our only safeguard from dropping back into our natural mind from which we can receive nothing from God is to be filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit. To be filled. And when you're filled, you can tell when you're filled because he said you'll have dreams and visions. That means when you get filled, you automatically start seeing things. So if you ain't seeing nothing, you ain't filled. Because when you get filled, you start seeing things. You say, what are you talking about? You start seeing yourself different. You see your future different. And the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. You'll see things in the Word of God you've never seen before through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Actually, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it literally, in the Old Testament, he'll change you into another person. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. All right, let me finish what he said here, and then I'll go on a little bit further here. He said, our only safeguard from dropping back to our what? Natural mind. Y'all paying attention. That's what they say in West Virginia. Y'all paying attention? Y'all better pay attention. Now listen, I said, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I just came from West Virginia, sorry. So, you better pay attention. That guy's so poor he couldn't pay attention. <laughs> but he's poor because he didn't pay attention. I'll see there. The Holy Spirit, come on, when you feel the Holy Spirit, that's your safeguard from dropping back to your natural mind. What's the trouble with your natural mind? The problem is you just get natural results. Right? So he said, if you drop back to your natural mind, he said the only safeguard to keep you from dropping back to your natural mind is to be filled and filled again with the Holy Spirit. Aha, then he said, I want to get you out beyond all human thoughts and visions into the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, here's the way Dad Hagen said it, and I'm going to kind of try to fit this in. I've got, you know, a bunch of other stuff there, and we'll just see what we can fit in here between your coffee breaks. Now, so... <laughs> between your donut time. <laughs> Just kidding. They're really good cinnamon rolls, too. I got me some of them donuts. But here's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> here's the way Dad Hagen said it. He said, there is a move of the Holy Spirit that will be lost to this generation unless we're taught. And he used 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5 right there, where he says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. So your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Woo! Amen. Amen. So he said, in this move, he didn't say the Holy Spirit would be lost. He said, there's a move of the Holy Spirit that would be lost to this generation unless we're taught by precept and by example. That means you need to have some services that may be evangelistic services, and you need to have some services that are primarily teaching services, but you need to have some services that's what you call believers meetings or Holy Ghost meetings. Have some every now and then. Amen. Holy Ghost meetings. Believers meetings. That might be what this is right now. So I slap you in the head, you know what I was doing. So in this demonstration or move of the Holy Ghost, amen. And a lot of churches today want the Holy Spirit, but they're actually embarrassed about him. In other words, they want the Holy Spirit, they just don't want him to demonstrate. And again, I understand because my natural tendency would be basically to teach a lesson, show you how smart I am, and let you know about the Lord, and then see who you're impressed with the most, and then, then uh, <laughs> sing a couple of pretty songs and let you leave. But that ain't going to change our generation. That ain't going to affect our generation. In other words, we need, come on, Brother Copeland prophesied, this next year, fabulous outpourings of the Holy Ghost, fabulous outpourings from heaven. Amen. Amen. And so you have to make room for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just make some room for him in many different ways, but in Holy Ghost meetings. 
My dad would say the Holy Spirit can do more in five minutes than you can do in five years. But you got a choice. I mean, he's not going to make you do anything. So you have to yield to him, make room for him, realizing the value of the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Uh, he like, acts like my mama. You know, my mama's always running around the church. <laughs> Amen. I'll, I'll run with you in just a second, brother. Now, so in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, the move of the Holy Ghost, amen, God can take care of things supernaturally. Amen. In the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, Wigglesworth said you must be prepared for certain extravagances if you want the move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As a pastor, as a leader, I deal with extravagances on a private basis. If I have to, I'll deal with somebody privately. If I have to deal with certain extravagances on a private basis, you know, uh, people that may be doing something, you know, and I'll deal with private. But if you deal with everything publicly, it'll make everybody afraid and nobody do nothing. Y'all still here? Now, so the value of the move of the Holy Ghost, remember, remember when David said, uh, inquired of the Lord if he should chase the enemy or not, and the Lord, he just stopped and waited, and, and he stayed there until he heard the sound. What do they call it? Of in the tops of the, the trees, he heard the sound of a going, it says, in the tops of the trees. In other words, wind started blowing. Sound of a going means the sound of armies marching. So he stayed there, and once he heard that sound, he said, now the armies of God are going ahead of me, and now I will pursue, and I'll win. In other words, David said in Psalms 18, the Lord will light my candle. When the Lord lights my candle, I can run through a troop, and I can jump over a wall. When he lights my candle, I'll chase the enemy down and trample him underneath my feet. What is that? That your inner man gets lit by the fire of the Holy Ghost. When he lights your candle, that means there's some things that are hindering you. You'll be able to get through those things, and there's some things limited you. You'll be able to get over those things in the new terror. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, he said there's spiritual demonstrations which are tongues and interpretation. Actually, they're actually designated for this dispensation, tongues and interpretation. The other gifts of the Holy Spirit were even in the Old Testament. So we must need it or he wouldn't have provided it for us. Amen. And Paul said to covet or to desire gifts and demonstrations or manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the Amplified uses the word endowments of the Holy Ghost. Imagine the Spirit of God giving you an endowment where you can withdraw from the riches of his glory and the resources that heaven has for you. An endowment. Come on, you're backed by a supernatural endowment of unlimited resources that take care of you in grand style for the will of God for your life. Amen? Amen. So in that, move our working of the Holy Spiritual demonstration and then physical demonstrations. <laughs> now, physical demonstrations are a little bit different. On the day of Pentecost, they acted like they were drunk or they were intoxicated. That's what you call a physical demonstration. They're like, drunk. So Peter said, these are not drunk as you suppose. So there's several characteristics of somebody being drunk or under the influence. One thing is you really don't worry about nothing. Come on, there is a God. You ain't him, so just cast your cares on the Lord. Come on. You cast all your cares on the Lord. Get that word look off of your face. You get full of the Holy Ghost. Say, yeah, I got the greater one working on my case right now. I believe everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Amen. And so you get intoxicated. Someone said life was not meant to go through sober. <laughs> sober in the sense that you're all serious all the time. Come on now. Always worried all the time. But you don't need no marijuana. You don't need no cocaine. Come on now. You just need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You get filled with the Holy Ghost, man. You get intoxicated and get under the influence. 
Wow, thank God for the Holy Ghost. So, so that would be what you call that, that you were drinking until you actually, come on, we could do like a breathalyzer test on some of y'all today and see if you actually drank anything. Because if you receive, come on now. Amen. And so there's that, that facet of physical demonstration. Then there's great joy in the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came upon David in the Old Testament, he danced with all of his might. In other words, that dancing, come on, you get so full of joy, you get thrilled with the Word of God, thrilled with the presence of God. And David danced with all of his might. That was the Old Testament. Come on, the ark was behind him. The New Testament, you are the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. If David dance in the Old Testament, you ought to be able to dance in the New Testament. Glory to God. I got the Holy Ghost living. The glory is on the inside. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Do you ever feel weak in your life? Have so many problems around you that you feel like things will never change? We have good news. The Holy Spirit takes what Jesus has done for us and makes it a reality in us. We might have felt like giving up. You may have felt like giving up on your marriage. You may have felt like giving up on your ministry or your church or felt like giving up on yourself, but the Holy Spirit won't mm -hmm. let you give up. He'll strengthen your inner man with mighty power. The way you yield to the Holy Spirit is the same way you yield to all the will of God. God doesn't want to just clean you up. He wants to fill you up. When you order the Holy Spirit package, you get our brand new book, The Holy Spirit is a Genius, plus the four CD set, The Holy Spirit, My Best Friend, and the four CD set, The Unlimited Language of the Holy Spirit. Your gift of $25 or more will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train leaders around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Well, I trust you've been blessed by the Word of God. I tell you, we get thrilled just talking about the person <laughs> and the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit. He's the greater one that lives on the inside of us, and He's the one that puts us over. That means you're not going to go under, you're going to go over. And so we have some powerful resources. The Holy Spirit package is not only some teaching and some CDs, but we have a new book called The Holy Spirit is a Genius. If you'll listen to Him, He'll make you look smart. And we talk all in that book about the Holy Spirit yielding to Him and also about the hidden language, the unlimited language and yielding to the Holy Spirit and the power of speaking yielded to the Holy Ghost and He brings you victory in every area of life. So I encourage you to get the resources that are available to you and actually also uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the programs over and over. We enjoy it immensely and also Thank you for being a partner with us as we preach the gospel all over the world. Uh, next, we're going to Nepal, then to Colombia. We came from Brazil, then we're going to Kenya, East Africa. We're going all over the world, and your partnership with us enables us to take the simple message of the Word of Faith and the work of the Holy Spirit and impart and carry it to nation after nation. So we say thank you so much, and may God richly bless you. We want to thank all the Mark and Trina Hankins Ministries partners. Amen. You have made this ministry possible. Praise the and Lord. And the Word is working mightily here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For over 40 years, our desire has been to take the foundational truths we have learned from our parents to believers. We have felt an acceleration of that assignment, and now more than ever, we want to take the message of faith that transformed our lives to as many people, churches, cities, and nations as possible. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. When they are strong in faith, they are powerful.
We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they are able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. The books are so instrumental in teaching because even if it's just one book, they can read that book and then they pass it on. That message is such a tool that can go where we can't go. Hello, my name is Nam, and it's my privilege to publish a Mark Hankins book in the Vietnamese. Until now, we finished our title, Taking Your Place in Christ, The Spirit of Faith, a Revolutionary Revelation, and The Bloodline of the Champion. We uh, distribute to our students in Bible school. Most of the book we uh, just give for free. People keep excited about Mark Hankins' book in Vietnamese. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We've been to over 30 different countries, but many of them again and again, inspired by the word of faith still working. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television through the website, social media, the app, and publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. El impacto del ministerio Pastor Mark Hankins ha sido grande en nuestras vidas. Es un tiempo de refrigerio cada vez que él viene. Imparte un espíritu de fe. Yo he sido sanado en una de sus campañas y siempre he avivado para hacer la obra del Señor. Realmente amamos todo lo que Dios hace a través de él. Es un ejemplo para nosotros. Each individual is so valuable to Jesus that he died for each and every one. And if just one person can get a hold of the word of faith in any village, any city, any country, and in any nation, that one person can change their world. The exciting thing is when we distribute the word that God gave us, there are people God joins to us to help, and we all become partners in doing this assignment. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. And we thank God for every man, woman, and even teenager that God has joined to us to help fulfill our call. When everybody pulls together, we are able to preach the word, not only in places like Africa and India, but also through avenues such as books, CDs, TV, social media, the app, and the website. We are so thankful for our partners somebody on the other side of the world is telling them, thank you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.